open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man, and with me today is the Dirty B. I'm not even going to fucking attempt to try to get you to say it. Full time. I'm done with that shit. And what we're going to be talking about is you had to have a recent conversation with your daughter about the name for her lady parts, as you call them, because uh, some kid at school uttered a word that she did not know the meaning of, and uh, yeah. God damn it. All right, explain to me the catalyst for the conversation. There wasn't really one. We were doing gingerbread house and cookies. Uh-huh. And she was at the sink washing her hands and she, said... She, your six-year-old. Yeah. And just was washing her hands and out of nowhere said something about a pagina. 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 With a P. Yeah. <laughs> I've called it many things. I've never called it a pagina. <laughs> yeah. I heard Snot on American Dad once call it a burgina. <laughs> that was a fun conversation that I didn't want to have. Yeah, well... So she brings up pagina, and then what? She asked what it was. What's a pagina? Because I said there's no such thing. And then I finally got into, well, there's a vagina with a V. And that's what your doctor calls your girl parts. I like the fact that you think you could keep getting away with calling them her girl parts. You don't even have any name for them at all prior to this incident. Like, you set her yourself up for and, failure. No. It's her privates or her girl parts. It's a giny. Gross. It's a giny. No. Because the Jonas Brothers music makes little girls' jinies tickle. And every time little girls' jinies tickle, Mickey Mouse makes money. South Park lined this up for everybody to know. Because every time little girls' jinies tickle, I make money. So you three little faggots are going to get out there and you're going to make my money. Huh? Shut the fuck up. God <laughs> oh, damn, buddy. So anyway, she kept on with it. And then she started rinsing out a bottle from spices from dinner and goes, this is my pagina water. Pagina water. Yeah. That was the point I was done for the night. Why was it pagina water? I don't know. Probably because she thought the word was hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> Hilariously wrong. <laughs> yeah. The night was done. I would just like to point out that uh, I had... Multiple instances of a conversation with the beast where she's like, well, we need to stop calling it a giny. They're not going to, the, what are they going to go to school? And if somebody touches them, say, somebody touch my giny. The school's not going to know what they're talking. I'm like, really? The school's not going to know what somebody touched my giny means? Like, you realize these are licensed educators, right? They're not like you. That's why they hand them dolls. Yeah. <laughs> Please show us on the doll. Where the angel touched you. Touched by an angel. Hmm. Oh. So I... One other thing we used to call it was a new new, But that's really what I called the beast vagina. I even forget how we got to uh, call it a new new. But uh, one time she bought a Teletubbies DVD for the juice. And I popped it in. And I'm I'm listening to it because I'm wondering what's the content of this DVD before I show her and she gets started on a new show. And uh, the episode was called Naughty New New. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, hello. It's a much more inviting title than that porno of hers that I found and made her watch with me that time that I ruined for her called uh, Screwed and Tattooed Volume 2 with the two chicks with all the tattoos. And then she draws the like heart of lipstick around the other girl's vagina before she starts fingering her ass. Oh. So I'm watching this Teletubbies show, and I don't know what Nunu is on the show. I know the names of the goddamn Teletubbies. I've never watched it. Okay. Well, there's Tinky, Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Poe. And they all might be a little retarded. Possibly. So then there's a fucking vacuum with a big elephant trunk of a nose, like, scooting around their spaceship of a house. And somebody calls a Nunu. And I went, and here's how the conversation went. Pitcher... Her upstairs in the kitchen and me down in the basement. I'm like, oh my God, the vacuum's called Nunu? And she's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, that's fucking hilarious. Naughty Nunu. I don't know what Nunu did to be so naughty, but 
Yeah, so Jiny and Nunu. And like we I've never told them. I've used the word vagina. <laughs> they know about a vagina. But uh, they don't call it their vagina. They just say Jiny. Like if the Chi-Chi has a problem, she's like, my Jiny hurts. I'm like, well, maybe if your mom would take a baby wipe and uh, clean that thing out on the day she doesn't bathe you, you wouldn't have such a sore Jiny. It's like, am I going to grow Jiny cheese? Oh, <laughs> There is a you thought you didn't like having the pagina conversation. <laughs> I, I didn't f- like having the how you give birth at three that's conversation. Your own fault. I would have told oh, her like no. You go to the mall, you take a baby and you go home. She's too smart for that. Right. I got a phone call once. Uh why is your daughter telling me she's gonna get giny cheese? Because like, because I told her that. You fucking told her she's gonna get cheese in her giny? <laughs> Like, you don't ever say that. I'm like, no, it's true. If she doesn't clean out her giny, she's going to grow giny cheese. <laughs> like, I didn't want to use the term from under, but it's giny cheese. <laughs> At least if she goes to school and she says giny cheese, they'll say, what are you talking about? My daddy says I'm going to grow giny cheese. And then they'll call me and I say, oh, I told her if she doesn't wash out her cooch, she's going to grow giny cheese. It's a very... Nice and simplistic way in childhood terms to uh, emphasize to her that she does not want a yeast infection. Now, if you want to get into an argument with a, at the time, she, she'll probably be five when this goes on. If you want to get into an argument with a five-year-old about probiotics and the pH balance of her downstairs, be my fucking guest. But good luck keeping a straight face and finding terms that you don't find offensive or uh, out of line. That's why, giny cheese. So go fuck yourself. Surprise! Where did she get the vagina from? School. School. Who said vagina? I don't know. She wouldn't tell me. One of her boyfriends? Maybe. The uh, harem of men that bow at her feet, apparently, because she's so popular with the males at that age? Yeah. You're raising a fucking Shahirazad is what you're doing. Yeah, that's what I try to do. (laughs) You must bow at my feet. Yeah. I guess whatever. Yeah. If it works for her as long as she doesn't come home pregnant. Well, she's six, so I would fucking hope not. No. She's just going to come home one Hopefully time. Hopefully she's, she's not like, built like me when I was 16. I didn't know you when you were 16. I didn't know you till you were 17. Oh, big difference. And at the time, um, you might have had a disproportionate amount of boob to how skinny you were. Not a lot, just a little bit. <laughs> You'll hear no complaints from me or any of the other guys that knew you, the way yeah. those plunging tops fit. Anyways. Anyways, what? <laughs> the way 16-year-olds are going, she's going to look like that at 12. It's like my friend's daughter was 12. She had a surgery, and it was too close to her pituitary gland. By the time she was 12, she had double Ds. Blonde, blue-eyed. Popular. Oh, she was a bitch for being 12, but... They didn't care. No. Nobody cared. She had tits. Yeah. And at that age, you're like, ooh, boobies. I want them on my face. They were gigantic. Really? Anyway, she was like six... No, not six. Five... Eight? Uh Uh-huh. At 12. Jesus. She looked like she was 20-something. So she got attention from older males. Mm, Not usually. She still acted like she was 12. Well, that's good. At least she's not out there acting like she's 25. Just like, I have to go home and do my homework. Well, her mom did have to send back some uh, bikinis that she had bought. Send back? Yeah. As in return to the store? As in return online. She had bought them online. It was like Sons of Anarchy, like the little tiny triangles. She's like, ah, no. That's unnerving. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't want to think about that. And then when she was... I have to go through that in stereo. Was she like 15? I think her best friends, who were guys, tried to rape her. That was a great conversation. Like legitimately hold her down and rape her, or she was engaged in something and they're like, nope, I'm not stopping. No. As in, she saw them as only friends, so there was nothing going on otherwise. And they tried to rape her one night. That's all I wanted to hear. High school parties. I remember working with a chick at Menards, and she said she was drunk at a party, and another guy that worked there put his hand down her shirt and started feeling on her tits. 
She's like, well, I didn't tell him he could. He just did it. I'm like, so why don't you do something about it? Well, no, it's fine. No, it's not fine. It's going to start with your tits. And then the next time he's going to touch your vagina. (laughs) And then what are you going to feel? You're going to feel ashamed of yourself for letting it happen. You got to speak up for yourself and try to prevent all that. And hopefully I don't have to have that conversation with my kids. Because there's going to be a body count involved. At least you're not the 11-year-old that sucked cock in front of an entire room of other guys. Oh, yeah. Remind me about... Yeah, that, yeah, I forgot about that. Let's go back to... Let's revisit that story. Yeah, she was 11. And she sucked some guy's cock in front of an entire room of other guys. Who was she again? A client. Ah, yes. Who came in to get a rub down? I told you, I hear a lot of things. Okay, you're going to have to actually tell the story how it happened now, because out of context. We were just revisiting her old... Buddy, fuck off! It's... (laughs) It's clean! (laughs) Oh, you're such a cunt. (laughs) One more time, maybe? (laughs) The fucking wall has no poop on it. Stop it. Tell the story. She comes in for a massage. And we were talking and she was revisiting some old issues. She just went into her past and her history and told me that. She's like, please don't judge me. I'm like, I don't care. How old was she when she told you this? She's in her 30s. Okay, so it's not like an 11-year-old came in and got a massage. Like, guess what I did the other day? Right. Otherwise, I'd probably have to report. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Don't judge me, but this one time when I was 11, I totally gave a blowjob for show. (laughs) But it caused her to work very hard to not be considered a slut. Why? Kind of might have put herself at a disadvantage with that one incident in -hmm. terms of what she was trying to establish for herself and her reputation thereafter. Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps. I guess when you're in the moment, it doesn't really, really? matter. When you're in the moment? <laughs> I don't know. I've never been in one of those situations. Room full of guys, and he's like, come on. <sighs> when I was what guy high- hasn't tried that? To get a blowjob in front of a room full of people? I've never tried that. I've heard a lot of people try. Jesus Christ. In high school. Who the hell wants an audience? How do you even get a boner? I have a hard enough time taking know. a piss at a urinal next to the other urinal with no partition. I can't imagine a room full of guys sitting there staring at your dick out for some girl to fucking go down on you. When you're in high school? especially Yes, especially in high school. Because then they're going to go the next day and say a bunch of stuff about your dick. And really? You because every guy I hung out with in high school was like, hey, check it out. To you. Not in a room full of people. Oh, no. There was a room full of people. Why are people whipping out their dicks? <laughs> I don't know. It begs the question. Was it a good size? I don't know. I tried. I kind of walked away at those points. You kind of walked away or you walked away? I walked away. Did you passively resist? Or or I just looked away. Don't. Just (laughs) swat it away. Just don't show me. I don't want to see that. (laughs) Don't. No. No. As you open one eye and just kind of take a quick glance. Oh. A room full of guys are going to see your dick. And if they go to school and say you had a small dick to all the girls at school, you Maybe might as well go... Maybe they knew that they didn't have a small dick. You might as well go matter. home and fucking kill yourself because there's no switch in schools because word gets around to other towns. <laughs> People will find out that there's rumors about you having a baby dick. And what are you going to do? Pop a Viagra and come into the lunchroom and just whip it out for everybody like, look, no, it's not true. Look, check it out. It's fucking regular size. At least it's fucking good size, right? Like, you're not going to fucking show your dick to disprove that you have a small dick. I don't know. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Well, you've gotten drunk at parties and flashed some skin, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know you're not particularly proud of that. I flashed all of the Boulevard on my 21st birthday, so. From where? <laughs> oh. What, you stand out on the corner and just titties? Yep. Pretty, huh. It's still in the parking lot. Eh. There was traffic. And there was people outside smoking. Yeah? Did they see the titties? Probably. Did nobody make a comment like, woo? I don't. I was a little intoxicated. Obviously. Yeah. 
You were you only hauling out the sweater meat, or did you ever start flashing your hoo ha? No, I've never done that. Well, that's good. At least you know you can still wear a white dress. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, you probably shouldn't, but you could. Really? I guess. Perhaps. No, you, you can't wear a white dress. You're too impure. Oh, thanks. Well, you never know. Your mom might be like, I don't know why you think you can get away with wearing a white dress. No. Which would be a horrible toast speech at your wedding. Yes, because any girl that's married now is a virgin. All girls are virgins. When they get married? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody okay. has premarital sex. <laughs> My daughters will not be having premarital sex. They're not even going to be allowed to be married. They will pass away unexpectedly. <laughs> They're going to be the worst ones. The juice died at home amongst family unexpectedly. No, it was not an overdose. Please don't ask any questions. I plead the fifth. Juice. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'll be able to make it as convincing as, say, what happened to Bobby Christina, but hey. Oh. <laughs> No. That's not nice. Are you fucking serious, cat? <laughs> Just cover the shit. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I don't have cats. So aside from flashing your tatas on your 21st birthday, did did you have like a reoccurring bad habit of hauling them out? For a while. A while. Yeah. Is it like a weekly thing, a bi-weekly thing? No. I don't know. Just whenever it hit me. Really? I don't. I don't. I was a little understand. more daring when I was twenty-one. Because. I don't know. Liquor. Liquor. You're gonna blame the liquor. You and need to, to accept responsibility. Skinny for your dipping own every head. summer. Well. With who and where? Up north. I didn't get to go to a lot of parties in high school because my parents kept me under lock and key. So when we had get-togethers, we would do things like record ourselves making prank phone calls. Yeah, I've seen those. smashing equipment we took home from Target by accident, like radios or LRTs. So I wasn't at a lot of places where people were hauling out their tots. I was friends with a lot of nerds that kind of let loose after high school. Did they let loose or did you let loose? I just might have been... A free spirit? Were you a yeah. free spirit? Are you going to use that fucking cop-out excuse sure. again? I'm free spirited. What do you mean, again? I've never used that. Your daughter comes running out of the bathroom with nothing on in front of my kids, flashing her downstairs. I'm like, put some damn clothes on, hide your shame, and here's you. She's a free spirit. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if you're singing that same fucking tune if she's doing that in high school. You come home and there's a party at your house you didn't know what was going on. And there she is sitting on the couch with her fucking snatch hanging out. We'll see if you're not the one saying hide your shame. Yeah. Just don't buy her multicolored lipstick. No greens, blues, or... There's no rainbow parties going on. Yellows. I almost don't know if I should let my kids be around your kid in a few years. <laughs> She might be the bad influence. Yeah, probably not. No? I swear to God, if I ever walk into a room and they're comparing breasts, I'm moving to Canada. Every girl does that. I'm abandoning... Who? What? Every girl does that. You compared breasts with your friends? I did it last year. Go on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where were you when this happened? Uh, the holiday party for work. Really? <laughs> I stalled on that one. I guess I did. Who's, whose tits were out? We said, what, did you just haul them out in the room full of people? We closed the door a little bit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dear Penthouse. Or if you need help in the bathroom, you just, they come out. I'm sorry. You somebody compare them in high to, school? Somebody needs you to hand them a tampon. And you're like, hey, by the way, check out my tits. Some do. Whose tits were these? not saying is it somebody i've talked about on the show before yeah <laughs> the not real boobies no those are at a different party those were during the this summer. was before oh those were in the summer before i remember now happened. i remember you told me she was drunk and she made you look at her tits yeah and they were not 
proportionate. <clears throat> Not a good nipple to meat ratio. The way you described him, I would say that her nipple to boob ratio is comparable to Gina Davis's tooth to gum ratio. Probably. Too much gum. Mm -hmm. Too much areola. Yeah. And, you know, when you tell a guy that you saw a weird pair of tits, what do you think that does to him? I don't know. He wants to see those tits. Well, everybody wants to see them, but. Well, almost everybody gets to. <laughs> no. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so you're comparing breasts. She showed you hers, then you... No, you I did showed... not show mine. Well, then you weren't really comparing breasts. It was more like a support group. She wanted affirmation that her tits weren't weird. Unfortunately, you lied. <laughs> that was just the one. The one boob? The one last year was them comparing to each other. And? I didn't show mine. That's not what I wanted to know. You were standing there and they both pulled out their tits. Yeah. How long were the tits out in the open? Good minute. God damn it. <laughs> Is it any wonder that guys are going to claim that they identify as a female to go into women's bathrooms, <laughs> hoping that shit like this is occurring? You can sit there and say all your social justice bullshit It doesn't about, usually happen in the bathroom, yeah, though. It's you in shut up. side rooms of a party. Side rooms of a party? Yeah. Trust me. All it's going to take is one guy walking in one time as a joke, and there's like three pairs of tits out, and he's like... <gasps> a lady <laughs> i am doing this every time from now on i'm gonna see all the boobies i would do that i'd put on a blonde wig and yeah, but go guys, into a girl's bathroom if i knew they were gonna be tits, love tits no they're 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 mesmerized they by them. love them for a different reason why do they love them they just like to they like to play with them yes my tits have been played with by a gay guy that's not a gay guy that's a guy who's <laughs> uh closet bi <laughs> Not the same way a straight guy would play with them. Well, yeah, because it would be more awkward for the gay guy because he doesn't know what to do with them. Because it was more like, eek, they're squishy. Nobody can see your hands. I don't care. You, you went underneath bounce, then you went sideways squish, <laughs> then you went top down push. Yeah. And said they're squishy. Yeah. You have to elaborate and explain what you're doing with your no. hands for radio. So would you say the gay guys were more gentle touching your boobs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they didn't know what they wanted. Did you show them your vagina no. too? No. Look me in the eyes and say that. No. You didn't let the I'm gay thinking. guys see your. No. Yeah, you're thinking. I was offered to have vaginal reconstruction if I carried a child for one. A gay guy offered to pay you to be a surrogate, and in exchange, he would uh, pay the cost of you to get your nanny rebuilt. Mm hmm. Like Steve Austin, the $6 million man, only they'd, we can rebuild her. We have the technology. <laughs> and a stitch and an injection and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Now, I don't understand what they're doing in vaginal rejuvenation. I mean, they're just making the hole smaller. Mm -hmm. And who's to say it's not going to rip open again? What a colossal fucking waste of time. What do you mean rip open? Like, if she gets a dick that's too big for the hole, it's not going to stretch. It might tear. Yeah, you're not going to tear it the same way you do with a child. Well, no shit, but still. All right? All it's going to take is one guy that she thinks she can handle, and she's too drunk to realize, the, you know, the size because her depth perception's off. And then by More the end- More painful if you have to have part of your cervix taken no, out. No. By the end, her vagina is going to look like the predator when he takes his <laughs> mask off. And opens up those tong teeth and they spread. There's and enough that, that look like that now. Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, you are one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> That's how her vagina is going to end up. No, it's more, it's worse if you have to have part of your cervix removed. How do you, wh how, what? They remove part of your cervix. For what? Well, most of the time it's for cancer. Well, they don't just do it like, hey, we're in here. You got some extra cervix meat. Let's kind of take that. It's not like. Yeah, no. Other girls I've dated that have roast beef sandwich vaginas that need to seriously have labiaplasty done because they have mm -hmm. extreme outie vaginas. How common is that anyways? I've only seen one vagina like that. I've seen like kind of plump outer lips. I've seen vaginas so small that you would swear you're not looking at a grown woman. And then I've seen the pink lotus. <laughs> Which, it, there was a lot of extra inner lip meat. It was hanging out. And you know what? 
it um kind of a turn off. I've had this conversation at work. You should make sure that your vagi- and make sure your vagina game is on point. I told him that I kind of want to compare all of our vaginas cuz they God sound about damn the you. same. And you know what? <laughs> you keep talking like this and I'm going to be like Kip from fucking Bosom Buddies and I'm going to make myself out to be a lady to come to get a job where you work <laughs> just so that I can observe all the vagina comparisons. And then when it's my turn, I'm going to go, I'm sorry, ladies. I'm Catholic. I can't. I just, I'm so nervous. I don't want to. I'm not well kempt right now. Well, because I forced a couple of them to look at. Rape, Hang on. Rate my vagina. Oh, okay. And they were like, how does that happen? I don't look like that. Was this before or after I made you look at rate my vagina? This was after. Okay, yeah, because we looked at a lot of vaginas. Yeah. A lot. And uh, apparently on that website, there's a lot of... uh, You can't say a bad word. You can't say anything negative about the vaginas. It's, hey, tell me if I have an aesthetically pleasing vagina, but don't say anything negative about my vagina or you might get banned by the moderators. Which isn't the point of showing your vagina to the internet to find out if other people Well, especially if it's rate my vagina. Yeah, it's not look at my vagina and be nice dot com. It's rate my vagina. Yeah, there was not a negative comment. There was Once one I- quasi negative, and then the guy's like, "Hey, let's keep it positive here. We're not going to bully anybody." Well, you don't show your fucking train wreck of a pussy to the internet, and then expect everybody to be like, "Oh, that looks delicious. I'd totally like to eat that." Which is the majority of the comments where I'd love to stick it in that, or I'd love to eat that. Which the weird ones were. My husband wants me to post it on here yeah nice really? try bitch and those were like the worst ones you want to know why because he wanted to know if everybody else thought it was as much of a fucking school bus crash as he did <laughs> oh, wrong website to post it <laughs> what well i'm gonna i can start a website called uglycunts.net i hope it doesn't already have that domain owned uglycunts.net and then what we'll do as uh, women can submit pictures of their vaginas, and it's a lot like Roast Me from Reddit. <laughs> Are you going to be okay? I recently discovered <laughs> Roast Me on Reddit, thanks to the Dirty Bee. And I'm and all I do is just talk shit about the people, because that's all you do is you talk shit about the people that put their picture up. They're asking for a fucking... Somebody to just totally destroy them. Well, that's like... You're a brave soul. Yeah, pretty That's much. The only comment. I think my favorite one is if unenthusiastic hand job had a face, it would be yours. That's great. <laughs> Brings out the creativity in people. <laughs> so at uglycunt.net, you would submit pictures of your vagina, and then I would say things about your vagina. And you know what? You asked for it, so don't get a there's gonna be no let's keep it positive. We don't want to bully anybody. Because we all know that deep down people are mean pieces of shit. And they want to talk smack about other people's naughty parts. That's why there's another site for dicks. And some chick has dudes submit pictures of wieners. But she's the only one that comments. She's the only one that comments and then she talks smack to the guys with the baby dicks. Which is hilarious. (laughs) Roadhouse. I don't care how questionable it sounds. That website (laughs) is hilarious to me. I'm comfortable enough in my masculinity that I can look at other dicks. I can look at other dicks on the internet for comedic purposes of somebody else mocking them. Because then I get a base of reference of where I'm at in the grand scheme. I'm doing fairly well. Now, if you go to the porn sites, it's a little bit more discouraging. Okay, well, here's the thing. Because these are all black guys with Pringles cans in their pants. Most dicks look the same. What are you, a dick expert? There's not a huge range of diversity like there is for vaginas. I don't know. There's different shades, different lengths, different girths, cut, uncut. Yeah, but how you take a picture of it can be very different. Well, you got to get the lighting right, yeah. You got to make sure the light source is coming from behind the camera. And maybe do some push-ups first before you get that boner so that there's veins. Nobody wants to see a veiny dick. Why not? Yeah. What, do you want to see a smooth, regular, (laughs) half-flaccid dick that resembles a balloon before it's tied into a poodle <laughs> by a clown yes it's just like a pink tube that just brings up urban dictionary in the vagina i like how you brought that back full circle so uh go to ratemyvagina.com and look at all the train wrecks of vaginas what was the other one rate my dick rate my cock i think rate my cock 
And hopefully uh, I can get some donations from the listeners so we can uh, start up uglycunt.net. I'll have to Google and see if that's a website. I don't know when I'll do that because I'm currently not talking to my parents, so I can't use their computer. I have no internet at home, and I'm not going to look at it at work or at the library. Because <laughs> I've been at a library before when somebody's <laughs> looking up something inappropriate. It's awkward. It was a mentally retarded guy who was on some game site where there was some cartoon chick presenting, and then uh, he controlled the dick with his mouse pointer, and he kept stabbing it in there. And he was sitting at a computer that was facing the children's book section. Oh, so no. I complained, and then she didn't say anything like she said she would, but I made him uncomfortable enough that he left. And then being the psycho that I was, because the library was in my neighborhood, I followed him home, and he lived across the street from my friend. So I now know that retard Mike is a pervert who also lets his friends front meth sale operations out of his garage. Oh, God. Interact with the show on Twitter at, what do we call it? That is at, what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash, what do we call it? Podcast show for the, what do we call it? Podcast. I'm J-Man. She's the dirty bee. And that's the end. <laughs>